too many girls and women are still victims of female genital mutilation or FGM. They're cut with a simple blade, without anaesthetic, in a violent ritual, often performed in childhood. Kadi Koita considers herself as a survivor. Originally from Senegal and having suffered from FGM, she now campaigns to ban the practice. I decided to campaign against female genital mutilation because in the 80s in France, exactly in 1982, there were so many deaths. One three-month-old little girl died from hemorrhage after the amputation. This was very traumatic to me. The UN estimates that there are 600,000 victims of FGM living in the EU alone, and 180,000 girls are at risk. Goita tours schools to raise awareness about the issue. After our speech, there were some girls who wanted to share their personal experiences and ask, can you help us? Because they heard their parents planning a trip to Africa and saying, we are planning a party for you during the holidays. In Belgium, there's a hospital where women can get help, from psychological support to surgical reconstruction. Dr. Kaya explains the consequences of the different kinds of amputations. For women whose clitoris has been cut, it can cause pain, and there are also small tumors which can develop from the nerve of the clitoris, which are very, very painful. For women who have been sewn, we talk then about infibulation, another type of genital mutilation. They just have a few millimeters hole for the flow of menstrual blood and urine, and obviously it makes sexual relations extremely complicated. The issue has been taken up by the European Parliament. On Wednesday, MEPs approved a new resolution to put an end to female genital mutilation and to provide care for survivors. And that is adopted. We need political leaders to take this more seriously as the dreadful crime that it is and the life-changing effect that it has on, on the women. The resolution calls on member states to encourage third countries to ban FGM. If nothing changes, 68 million more girls will be at risk by 2030. Joanna Gill, Euronews.